Right, I'm back. Um, my dough has uh, rested. Um, it's actually really nice and smooth now, even though you can't really see because I've put a little bit of flour on top. But the, cons or the texture on top is really is smooth, like I said, baby's bottom type texture. Um, what I'm going to do now, before we start rolling out, I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my board. And um, I'm going to start preparing, I'm going to turn it a little bit to keep it nice and rounded. And I'm going to start by flattening it out with my hand as much as I can. Now one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make is that they flatten it in the middle and leave a big kind of crust on the outside. So I always have to tell people we're not making pizza, we're making a, <laughs> a sfoglia. And I'm just going to flatten it out a little bit with my other hand as well because otherwise it's going to be a bit uneven. <clears throat> Keeping it as nice and rounded as possible. So I'm flattening that out with my hand so it's nice and round. In modern, they say you want a round sfoglia. In Bologna, an oval one. Now, when you've got a small sfoglia, which this is, you can keep it rounded, but obviously if you want to make it oval, that's not a problem. When it starts getting really big, it's got to go somewhere, and so if you're going to hang it off the edge of your board, which is what you do when you work with a bigger sfoglia, there's in no way is it going to be able to stay rounded, because obviously gravity is going to pull it down and make it oval. But that's something we're going to in our pasta, in our handmade pasta masterclasses, um, either here in Bologna or in the UK. So, that's nice and um, sort of flat, that's, I can get it about as flat as that now. Now we want to start working with our pin. Now what's really important is that we work with our pin, with our hands. Don't whip the part, and that when I'm looking from on top of my sfoglia, I can see half of it, okay? So that means that I can't see very much of the bottom. So I'm gonna rest my pin on top, I'm going to see how balanced it is. It's got to actually be pretty balanced. And I'm going to push up almost to the edge and leave a lip. And I'm going to give it a quarter turn. Now, we're going to work in multiples of four. In the middle, so I can see half of it on top. Rolling up and leaving a lip. And a quarter turn, rolling up, leaving a lip. And a quarter turn, rolling up leaving a lip and a quarter turn, rolling up, leaving a lip and a quarter turn, rolling up, leaving a lip and a quarter turn. When I do my classes I always have to get somebody to count because when I'm teaching and I'm talking I can never keep count so. Lip and a quarter turn. <clears throat> And again, this is my last one. So, I'm going to give that another quarter turn. Now, what happens is that it's going to get to the size, which it is now, where you can't really lift it or turn it with one hand without stretching it. So you don't want to stretch it. The other thing to take into consideration is that your rolling pin has two ends. This is the end that's usually used to hang the pin. And this end is the, the end to, to use to perfect uh, your edges, okay? So if you see that your edges are slightly indented, you can use this to to um, to bring them out. But I'll show you how to do that afterwards. So now, next stage. I roll my dough over and I press out very, very gently. Lift up, quarter turn, and push down. I'm going to do the same again, roll very gently, lift up, quarter turn and push down, roll over completely, very gently, lift up and a quarter turn, lift up and a quarter turn, <laughs> that's my last one now. So I'm just going to flatten that out with my hand. Right, so this is the next step. So what we're going to do, again, we're going to start so that your pin is 
um, place. So that when you look from on top, you can see half the spolia. And you're going to work right to the edge now, okay? Not over the edge, but to the edge. And we're going to roll north, northeast, and northwest, and then do a quarter turn. So again, to repeat, we roll north, northeast, and northwest. Depending on the size of your spolia, um, you will need to roll two, three, four, five times, however many it is. The bigger it gets, the more times you're going to have to roll outwards. So now I'm going to roll twice north, twice northeast, and twice northwest. We're starting from about half of the spolia, okay? We're not starting right from the bottom. So I'm going to flip it over my pin, quarter turn, and roll out. Twice north, twice northeast, and twice northwest. And I'm going to give a little push out in the middle again. And bring it down. Twice north, twice northeast, and twice northwest. Bring it out in the middle. And turn it over. I'm just going to bring it forward. If it hangs over the edge, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't matter. Twice north, twice northeast, twice northwest. I'll bring a little bit up in the middle. Now, this bit is a little bit indented. This is where I'm going to use the edge of my pin, and I'm going to hold it on my hip, flat. And I'm going to push slightly outwards, okay? So to re retain that, round, that rounded shape. It's only a couple of small movements. And again, twice north, twice northeast, and twice northwest. And push up, and fold over, and a quarter turn. Pull it down, twice north, twice northeast, twice northwest, and push up in the middle and a quarter turn. Twice north, twice northeast, twice northwest, and a quarter turn. Roll down, twice north, twice northeast, Twice northwest, push up in the middle, flip over, and a quarter turn. And I'm going to carry on doing that now until I'm, it kind of gets bigger and I'm going to start using a swimming motion. So, so we're swimming north, swimming northeast three times because it's getting bigger, swimming northwest, and pushing up in the middle, flipping over. Never pull your dough, lift up, roll over, and pull down. And again, swim. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Not sure, quite sure something's sliding here. Not sure if it's my board or my pin. So there I just perfected the edges a little bit. Okay, I'm lifting up, rolling it back down, quarter turn, and I'm bringing it towards me. And again, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Three. Now I'm right-handed. When I make the corrections, I always prefer to work to the right. So again, on my hip, flat, because otherwise if you hold it upright, then you're going to make a hole in your dough. So you want to just push out slightly. Your dough. Flip over. Pull down. Lift up. Roll it over. And bring it forward. So I can feel that it's starting actually to get quite sticky now. 
a little bit sticky. I don't know whether that's because of the humidity in the room. So I'm going to do a little tiny sprinkling of, of flour. Also, because what I don't want is for it to stick to itself. So, again, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And push up again in the middle. This has got a really beautiful surface texture now. It's starting to get really textured. Gonna pull it down. And again, we're working from the middle. Push up. One, two, three, and four, because it's starting to get bigger. One, two, three, and four. And I think my board is actually sliding. One, two, three, and four. And I'm always lifting it, I'm never pulling it. And I bring it down. So again, this has got a very slight indentation. I'm going to bring it outwards. Here it's got a very slight indentation. I'm going to bring it outwards. Like that. Flip over. Bring it down. Now this is another movement we can start using. Okay, so there are several move movements. I'm not going to do them all today because otherwise we'll get confused. But we just bring out very, very gently and glide our hands out from the middle of the dough. Okay, what's really important is that we lift it up and move down. Never going right to the edge because otherwise it's going to stick to itself and it sticks. if it sticks to itself then it's a bit of a problem. So lift up. And can you see it's already sticking a tiny bit. So this means that it's slightly humid. I'm going to add a little bit of flour. Not too much because I don't want it to be too dry. Just a tiny bit. And the dough will actually absorb as much flour as it needs. Here there's a slight indentation on hip and push slightly out. And again, flip over. Now when you flip over, and this is something we can actually show better in class, um, you have to flip it over and then you've got to push your, your, um, your pin back a little bit so it's really tucked in properly. Because otherwise, if you have flappy bits, then you end up with um, folds in your dough, which is not what you want. So I haven't, I guess, creased bed sheets. No creases in your bed sheets. There, lift up. So can you see? You can already see my hand through there. Lift up. And a quarter turn. And bring it down. So, under normal circumstances, I'm going to be honest, I would normally do this quicker, but because I'm explaining, it's taking a bit longer. And so the tendency is for it to maybe dry out a little bit. going to correct that outwards. So we're going to alternate this kind of gliding motion and the swimming motion. Like I said, there is another process as well, or technique, but don't want to confuse too many people. I think sticking to two or three right now is more than enough. Okay, lift up. Can you see? So it's looking really, really, really good. Now, there is this saying that you need to be able to read a newspaper through it or um, see San Luca, which is the cathedral in Bologna, up on the hill through your dome. Now that all actually pretty much depends on what you want to, what you're making. So if you're making tortellini where your dough has to be really thin, then yes. 
Otherwise, if you have a dough which is that thin and you make something like propilone or tagliatelle, then it's just not going to, um, they're just not going to be sustained. And they're going to flop, which is not what you want. So my dough is slightly thicker on this side. And so I'm going to glide out more on this side. I'm going to work that bit a little bit more. And so the beauty of handmade pasta is that it's not all the same and not all even. So you've got slightly thicker consistency, maybe slightly thinner. And that all kind of adds to the, to the mouth feel. So like I said again, can you see, you really can see my hand now, and that's a really beautiful thickness. There we go. So they say that your sides need to kiss, so if they meet up, this one pretty much almost perfect, I'm always trying to Get, them, get it like sort of perfect 360 degrees, but I guess I'm only human. But you know, pretty much, I mean, we've got all four sides meeting or kissing. Awesome. <laughs> 